Welcome. You are now in the den with Dr. Jen, a safe and comfortable place to explore female sexuality from a variety of perspectives and to start thinking about sexuality outside the box. Our den chat topic today. I'm really excited about this. This actually is a suggested topic from a viewer, Michelle in Alexandria, Virginia. She writes, last night I was watching Sex in the City and I noticed a common subplot in the episode, waxing the cooter, which made me wonder if you would be doing an episode on what women do to their vaginas to make them conform to some unrealistic standards of beauty. Part of it could talk about women who feel compelled to wax their bikini line, or even for the more extreme, those who do the Brazilian and have the entire pubic area waxed. In Vaginas We Trust, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. That is a great topic suggestion. And thank you so much for writing. So our topic today is hair and how and why so many women remove it in sometimes painful and time consuming ways. This actually reminds me of a conversation I had once back in college with a guy who was annoyed by women who chose not to shave their armpits or legs. It's just so unnatural, he complained. But obviously he was confusing what is biologically natural with what is culturally natural and acceptable. And as Michelle indicated, the level of self-discipline around hair removal has spread to practically all areas of the female body, except the head. There's even a vagina monologue about hair removal called simply hair. So what's the deal? Why the hatred and removal of practically all the visible hair women have except on the head. And we're talking about a lot of areas on the body. Toes, feet, legs, thighs, bikini line, genitals, belly button area, areola, underarms, chin, upper lip, sideburns, eyebrows. Gah! If we're removing hair from so many different parts of our bodies, my guess is that it's pretty natural to have hair on our body, even though society stigmatizes it. Just as armpit and leg shaving is pretty standard here, waxing the cooter, as Michelle said, has become more the norm in certain younger age groups and cultures in the US. Why did this happen? Well, if you ask the women who do so, most say that they like the smooth feeling, sex is better, or it's cleaner. But if suddenly it became the norm to shave our heads because it's smoother, cleaner, and is sexually arousing, would we do it? Why did this message arise that it is sexually arousing for a woman or girl to remove her vulva hair? Trends come and go, but this one seems connected to our obsession with youth and presenting women in infantilized ways and praising the ideal of the feminine as hairless in contrast to the masculine. But if men are naturally masculine and women are naturally feminine, then why so much work to achieve these? Because it's scary to be different and outside the norm, especially when it comes to beauty standards that we've learned to define ourselves by. And the thing is, if you're spending a lot of time and money on hair removal products and services, that's okay. You're in good company. Lord knows I struggle with this too. But just make sure you know why you're making that decision in the first place. Sexual fun fact number 87. Who was the famous female Mexican artist in the early to mid 20th century who painted many self-portraits and frequently included her facial hair, mustache and unibrow, that she refused to remove? Any ideas? Frida Kahlo. She was unapologetic for her appearance, even when it didn't match ideals of traditional beauty and her personal appearance and pain were the subject of much of her highly acclaimed artwork. And I think it's refreshing to see images like this that are more a reflection of reality. The Den Recommend. So my Den Recommend today is this really rockin' new waxing product called 
Bush be gone. Bush be gone. Apply directly to the bush. 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 Bush be gone. Available at Green Walls. Bush be gone. It is a really great way to remove all your unwanted and unsightly pubic hair with only minor skin irritations, rashes, and itching. Totally worth it to be smooth and clean and childlike. Okay, I'm just kidding. My real den recommend is quite to the contrary to that. It's Bitch Magazine. Yeah, Bitch Magazine calls itself the feminist response to pop culture. It is a hardcore critique of the beauty and sexual images in mainstream US media. They offer incisive commentary on our media-driven world, which includes TV, movies, magazines, advertising, interviews with pop culture makers, new books, and music. We are constantly consuming media images, whether even aware of it or not. And these create a lot of what we consider reality. So Bitch is a really clever and challenging magazine that gives us a broader perspective. And you may be wondering why they've called their magazine Bitch, as this is a generally derogatory word thrown at women. Well, as they explain on their website, when it's being used as an insult, bitch is an epithet hurled at women who speak their minds, who have opinions and don't shy away from expressing them, and who don't sit by and smile uncomfortably if they're bothered or offended. If being an outspoken woman means being a bitch, we'll take that as a compliment. Thanks. Huh. Yeah, I think I've been called a bitch a time or two in my life. It's nice to reclaim words like that, so they lose their wounding power. So if you have any questions or comments about trimming the bush or being called a bitch, visit me at drjensden.com or email me at jennifer at drjensden.com. So stand tall and strong, stroke that hair, and be kind to yourself. Looks like you're in a boat in the middle of the ocean. I've been stuck out here for days! Oh no, shark.